We broke the ice on the plunge pool again this morning and as we were in front of the fire drinking tea and rotating to keep warm, um, the phone rang and it was a producer from ABC Radio in Ballarat wanting to talk to Patrick who was on their books. Um, they spoke to him a couple of years ago about uh, Local Laws Number 2, which some of you may remember we made a couple of films about it. We can put those down uh, in the description. And it was about um, people in this area no longer being allowed to have uh, roadside stalls outside their properties. That is without a permit from the Hepburn Shark Council, which will cost you around $500 a year. And there was a, um, recently there was a family, uh, a Victorian family, who had an egg stall, um, a roadside stall just outside their house, and their house tragically burnt down. And um, the insurance company said, we're not going to pay you because you have insured your house for residential property, but actually it's a commercial property because you have this egg business. The couple sold their eggs here using an honesty box at the end of their driveway, and the chickens laid their eggs in the shed that's behind me. Both are a few hundred metres from where their home once stood. Um, so then uh, the producer um, then called back and Patrick went on air and spoke about, um, yeah, just they wanted his opinion about it. And Patrick Jones, good morning to you. Good morning, Steve. What do you make of a story like this? And this is based around insurance companies rather than local government. But as someone who has been active in this space before, what do you make of it, Patrick? Yeah, I, I just see it as a continuation of this culture of enclosure, of making sure that our children uh, in our households, um, our son runs a roadside store selling firewood. Uh, so, yeah, that our children don't grow up um, with an enterprising spirit, with a self-provisioning spirit, and the ability to, um, uh, at this time of extremely high costs of living, um, it seems that from local government to state government to um, businesses such as insurance, uh, the, the enclosures are coming thick and fast. Patrick, will you rethink the roadside stall with the firewood that your son runs or will you check your insurance as this story sort of gathers a bit of momentum? We've been through such a, a like a, a range of different challenges over the last uh, three years and I think our household is trying to find a resilience and a bounce back ability that is outside of the corporate model. Mm. How many roadside stalls are there in your part of the Hepburn Shire? Is it a common thing to see, Patrick? Uh, they're diminishing. Yeah. What sort of things? What sort of things have they sold over the years that you've noticed them there? Yeah. So there's a beautiful flower stall that uh, on the way down to Hepburn, um, just on the edge of Dalesford. There's that was there for many years. Um, there's out just on the outside skirts of town. There's farmer stalls. Um, there's there's a beautiful old timer who uh, would hand carve walking sticks down in Hepburn. This is this is why people have come to this area to see this sort of spirit of activity and um, you know and and with our local laws number two being uh, enforced upon us, it's you know where, where I, I spoke to ABC Ballarat about. One of the, the, the rules being not allowed to sing in public, even if you're not collecting money as a busker. I do without, recall that conversation. <laughs> with, without a permit. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's, that's what I mean about conti this continual assault on, um, on, on people's lives. Patrick, uh, thanks for starting the conversation with this this morning for us. I appreciate your time. A pleasure. That sparked some really juicy, interesting conversations. Uh, again, still huddling around the fire. Just about our insurance policy and our insurance that we've been that we have on our property, home and contents insurance that we've been paying for the last fifteen years since we've been living here, and what it means, what insurance means, what this fear money means, what it means to. What, what are we assuring? What are we, what are we hoping that we will receive? Is it just peace of mind? Is it just what are we hoping to avoid by, yeah. paying, by paying this annual fee of about $1,800? And also what 
industry are we supporting? Yeah. And I suppose over the last 17 years since we've got together, we've been slowly just checking off uh, a lot of safety nets, uh, a lot of reliance on industrial culture and industrial economy. We are also uh, aware that we have friends around Australia who cannot be insured anymore because of floods. The, 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 the costs of living, the unfolding climate chaos, the enclosures from government and corporate um, power is alivening us to having other forms of insurance, not industrial insurance. So what is that? What, what does that look like? Well, when you live in a community and you serve in a community, community gathers around you in a time of crisis. And then you said, well, what if the whole town burns down? Well, we're all, all in, in it together. We're all in it together. Yeah. But certainly when a house burns down in Dalesford, community gathers. Eliza speaking. Yes, hello, Eliza. Um, I would like to cancel my insurance policy, please. Can I give you my policy number? Yes, just give me two seconds, sorry, Del. Uh, what was your name? Please. Meg. Okay, perfect. So I've got your um, policy here. We've got your building and contents. Now, what date am I cancelling from, Meg? From today, please. Today? And I just have to pop a reason in here. Was that due to cost or claims experience? Um, just deciding um, I would prefer not to have insurance. Okay, sure. Um, I'll just put no longer a yeah. Um, I will just mention if it's possibly due to any sort of hardship or anything like that, Meg, we do have teams that um, are more than happy to talk to you if you'd like to speak to anyone about payments, etc. Okay. Before I lock it in, would you like any help with that? No. You... Thank you for offering, no, okay. but no thanks. That's all right. No worries. Um, okay. There will be one final payment due yep. um, of... $34.75. Yep. Okay. Now that will come out on the 10th of next month. Okay. okay? Yep. Um, that's just the pro rata amount. You normally pay the one fifty six, but it's all done for you, Meg. Yep. And once that final payment's been taken, the direct debit ceases. Okay. Lovely. Okay. Yep. So just let us know if you need anything else. Okay. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks, Meg. Thanks, Eliza. Bye. Living outside the industrial grid, this safety net and the control that that safety net demands of us. And uh, trying to prevent us from being fully human mm. because we, we take risks as humans. And all the stories that we heard from our friends who were up in the northern rivers with the floods, the community stepped up mm. and just what a, you know... The government and the army came, but it was the community action that really made a difference. Mm. And just to teach our kids to be resilient and what we're willing to risk for our freedoms. Mm. And we are willing to risk for, for the sake of Woody to be able to have his stall out the front for him to self-provision, for him to enact his own form of economy, for him to have a relationship to the forest and to to not not to be conscious of not over harvesting, for him re taking gifts back to that forest, so he because he wants to be in relationship with the forest in terms of him not just taking a whole lot of wood and just not caring about the forest, you know all of that that ha that takes place when he fills a bag of firewood, that is that is life. This is his life. This is his future. This is his learning. For us, that is more important than having this false safety net. Mm. And I think the, the, the thing that we're really stepping away from is the dominant culture's ideology that humans can um, produce a non-suffering world and that that false hope is um, sets people up for more pain um, or, or sets people up for failure when pain happens. Does, that, does it feel scary for you at all not to have insurance now? 
No, it doesn't. It feels liberating. Mm. I think we worked out that if we spent another 20 years paying insurance, it would be like 30 grand or something, or more than maybe 35 grand. or mm-hmm. A lot. A shitload of money yeah. that, that we don't have and we don't want to earn in the industrial economy to service that. So what happens if our house burns down or um, it blows away or... I don't think we're going to get flooded on top of the hill here, but what happens? And so we've been going through some of those scenarios and never never the scenario you think is going to happen, so we also have to bear that in mind. But what, you know, we've lived in a tent for 400 days on our bikes. We've done um, a whole series of things that have put ourselves into a place that we know that we can not only survive but actually thrive And so there's been a lot of prep work to get to this point of detachment from another layer of security. (laughs) This is like a little step uh, in decoupling, another little step in decoupling from the fear economy, the, the, the economy that holds us in a place of safety and thus controls our lives.